Hello everyone, this is Robert and welcome again to another Prusa XL video. I know I said that my next video is going to be about soluble supports and all that good stuff, but I was talking with Clow42, you're probably familiar with his YouTube channel, if you're not, check out the link down below, and we were kind of bouncing off some different ideas on how you could use multiple extruders and all that good stuff, and he came up with a really good idea, which is combining PETG with TPU to make faceplates like this one that have flexible membranes in them so you can press buttons down below and you can have a nice sealed membrane. So I thought that was really cool. Obviously I had to try this out. So let's talk about the process and um, go over the results. So I've had my XL for, I don't know, about a month now, and the thing that I'm really liking is the new flexibility and the new options that it presents. I don't even know some of the applications that I'm going to be using this for, but even just brainstorming with Cloud42, you know, coming up with this idea, it's just like, oh, hadn't even thought about that. Before I purchased it, I hadn't even thought that that was an option, but now it is, and now it's another little tool that I can have in my tool bag, so I'm really curious to see what kind of cool things people are going to come up with. For this particular application, so I don't know if anyone remembers, probably don't, this is a lighting controller that I have for my shop. It turns on and off the lights in here. Made this a while back, and it's pretty simple. Has a board inside, has this metal face plate and these buttons. Problem with this thing is every so often the buttons kind of will stick in there a little bit because, you know, there's kind of an opening, things like that. And also being in the shop, things get really dirty and grimy and you're holding this with like oily hands. It'd be nice to have like a membrane switch. And you can get membrane keypads and things like that, but going custom and getting your own ones made, the quantities just don't really make sense. So the idea is to take 3D printing, use different materials, and embed those flexible membranes directly in the faceplate like this one. I don't know if we can see that, but there's actually flexible TPU membranes built directly into this. So we have one solid seamless surface, but there are some flexible membranes for pushing the buttons. And that is a really, really cool application. So let's um, dive into SOLIDWORKS. I'll kind of show you what the design looks like, and then we'll take a closer look at this, and we'll replace it in the lighting controller, and I'll show you how it works. So this is essentially the faceplate that I had previously when I built the lighting controller. And all I've really done here is add these little membrane buttons inside. So if we take a cross section view, you can kind of get a better idea what's going on. Let me hide this sketch. And that's really all there is to it. You've got these little membranes. And if you watched my last video, you saw that there needs to be some kind of overlap. Um, PETG and TPU does actually stick and bond better together. So I probably don't really need this overlap as much, um, but it does kind of help make the button feel like it is just part of the um, whole faceplate. And I'm doing this kind of based on layers. So if you look at these planes, um, let's look at it like this. So this is all designed with 0.25 layers in mind. So this is 0.25 millimeters. This next one is at 0.5. So basically you've got one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers. So you really only have four layers in this whole piece before we actually get to the little button nubs down here. And the actual button nubs themselves are once again TPU. Everything in this you know, button assembly is TPU. And these just kind of extend out a little bit and extend as far as they need to just to press the button down below. And there's really not much else to it. We'll just take this file, export it as a 3MF, bring it into the slicer, use the same process I talked about in my previous video. And really there's nothing else to it other than limiting the speed of the TPU. Prints perfectly fine. So here's what they look like up close, and at first glance, you can't really tell that there's anything going on. I was going to tease this in the video. I was like, oh, check this out. It just looks like a 3D printed rectangle. But when you kind of get them in the right lighting, you can actually see the um, see-through membranes because they're relatively thin. So you can kind of see the transparency, but then we put a finger over them, can't see them. The trick here is to use the textured build plate. When you use the textured build plate, the materials just kind of blend into each other and you really can't see any of the layer lines. You can't really tell where the transition is between them. And come on, credit where credit is due. 
I think the XL does a really good job with the tool changer of being able to pick one extruder, extrude some material, prime it, switch to the other one, and you really can't see any offset or any change between the two filaments. These are two different filaments printed together in that first layer, which is pretty impressive. Really happy with the load cell. I did two of these just because I adjusted the depth um, of those nubs. This one has like slightly thicker nubs on the back to hit the buttons better. But anyway, um, let me swap this out and I'll kind of show you how it works. It's really kind of um, hurts your brain a little bit when you see this because you can feel the membranes in here. You can absolutely feel that these things press in, but when it's laying flat like that, you cannot see them. So it's kind of cool. So here is what it looks like, um, you know, with the face plate off. Got these little button caps which just come out. And these are kind of cool little buttons, but might be hard to tell. But it just sits slightly below this little lip, just a few millimeters below, and that's why um, these. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna turn off the lights. Uh, that's why these have the little nubs on them, just to kind of clear that little gap. So we're gonna take these off. And put on one of these. And the um, thing I didn't mention is I'm using obviously two blacks together and they just kind of blend in, but they do make different color TPUs. So I'm going to order some different colors and try some different things. Uh, Pet G is also very flexible. This, this is extremely thin. It's only like a millimeter or so. But PLA would probably be a better choice since this is so flexible. The whole thing just kind of flexes a little bit more than you would like. PLA might be a better choice. So you could do black PLA and then you could do different colored buttons. And this is why I want to get one of the five head machines because you could actually replicate these button colors. You could do like a white TPU on these, a red, and do the different colors. And I'm curious to see what it looks like when you blend those two in. Would it just be like these perfect cylinders? Who knows? So I think this is the, that's the first one. This is the good one. There you go. That's what it looks like when it is on there. And this is relatively flexible, I will admit. You would probably want this to have some ribs or, you know, like I said before, be PLA so it's a little bit more rigid. But in person, you can absolutely feel where all the buttons are. It's very obvious where they are. So it's kind of interesting. And I do want to try some other uh, methods. Um, we're going to try this in a future video. You can use a fiber laser, which is right over there, to actually do some engraving and do some lettering and whatever on there. But yeah, just feeling with your hands. I know we're one, two, three, four. You can absolutely feel where they are. And it's just this perfect solid membrane. And you can easily press through it and feel the buttons. Really, really cool. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Overall, I'm really happy with how this concept came out. So thank you, Cloud42, for coming up with this idea. Um, I'm sure he'll be trying to integrate this on his electric lead screw project. Um, if you're not familiar with that, check that out. This is a really great application for that because you have a control surface that you want to be perfectly clean and smooth. You have a lot of buttons on the front, but you don't necessarily want to have the um, physical intrusion of the actual button. So I think that'll be a good application for him. But anyway, if there's anything else you want to see, any other cool ideas you have for a dual extruder, I'm, I'm all ears. This stuff is um, really fascinating and I'm just starting to get my head around what can be done um, with the two tool head machine. And it's kind of reinvigorating my interest in 3D printing. So as always, thanks for watching. Um, check out my other videos. Um, check out the links down below and we'll see you in the next video.